About three years ago, I started to become fascinated with the art of film as an art form. Since then, I've watched hundreds of movies, some good and some bad. Now, a question I get asked a lot is, what is your favorite film? And I never have a solid answer because it's always changing. However, today I wanted to go through my favorite films because I do have some sort of a list or a collection. These are films that hold a special place in my heart. I'll be going through these films in lowest to highest rating. I gave these films on IMDb just for simplicity. Anyway, without further ado, here are my favorite films. Tully, directed by Jason Reitman, was released in 2018 and was one of my favourite films of last year. It stars Charlie's Theron and Mackenzie Davis. The film follows Marlo, a struggling mother of three who forms an unexpected bond with the night nanny hired to help with her newborn baby. This film is extremely sad and moving. I went to saw this with my best friend Emily. We were the only ones in the theatre and we were absolutely sobbing. Hey. Hello. Hey. So you went and you went and saw Tully with me, right? Yes. All right. What'd you think? Well, I had a week-long existential crisis, so it was pretty freaking amazing. Yeah. All right. Bye. I think the reason why this is so far down on my list is because my enjoyment of this film is more related to the memory of it. However, the film still stands on its own with stunning visuals and a really unique style. The acting all around was marvellous, Charlize Theron is a great actor and is easily the standout performance. Mackenzie Davis, who plays the night nanny Tully, is literally the only reason I went and saw this movie. She was in an episode of Black Mirror, which Emily and I really loved, and in checking her IMDB page before this movie came out, I saw it was there and added it to my watch list. The child acting was pretty exceptional from the kid who plays Marlo's autistic son, which is rare in films nowadays to find actual good child acting. I really do not want to say much about this film because it's best enjoyed going in blind, and I give it an 8 out of 10. Do you know what a night nanny is? Oh. Okay, you know what? Everybody does it. It's just like a regular nanny, except they come at night. You know, they stay over for a few weeks or a month, and they take care of the baby at night so mom and dad can get some sleep. It's no big deal. I don't want a stranger in my house bonding with my newborn every night. It's like a Lifetime movie, where the nanny tries to kill the family and the mom survives and she has to walk with a cane at the end. All right, well, we had a night nanny. I don't remember that. The reason you don't remember it is because she only came at night. Craig, please tell me you didn't hire me one of those people. You have a lot going on. Get over yourself. Call her. She comes highly recommended. Nightcrawler, directed by Dan Gilroy, was released in 2014. It stars Jake Gyllenhaal, who is one of my favourite actors of all time, and it also stars Riz Ahmed and Reen Russo, who both give outstanding performances. When Lewis Bloom, a con man desperate for work, muscles into the work of LA crime journalism, he blurs the line between observer and participant to become the star of his own story. This movie is amazing on so many levels. The cinematography helps create this dark and moody tone, which is further assisted by the amazing score. Great performances all around, but the one who really carries this movie is Jake Gyllenhaal's absolutely amazing performance. He's so good at capturing the small things in characters. Little things like posture and speech patterns all help create these really different and strange, unique characters. Riz Ahmed also gives an outstanding performance, which is funny after seeing him in Venom. This film is full of twists and turns and succeeds at telling an extremely fresh and creative story. What's sad is that the film is super underrated. Most people I've asked haven't seen it, and I really want to change that. I love this movie, and I give it an 8 out of 10.
I'm sorry, I'm late. Are you Richard? Uh, Rick. I'm Louis Bloom. Oh, hey, Lou. Louis. Sit down. The situation is that I lost an employee, and I'm interviewing for a replacement. Okay, you're, uh, the, the ad didn't say what the job was? It's a fine opportunity for some lucky someone. <laughs> okay. Two thousand and nine was a great year for stop motion animation. We had films such as Coraline, a weird yet fun adventure movie, and Mary and Max, an absolutely amazing Australian animation. But we were also treated to the standout hit Fantastic Mr. Fox, which was directed by Wes Anderson. This used to be my favorite film of all time. Fantastic Mr. Fox follows the adventures of Mr. Fox when he returns to his farmer raiding days, to which he then has to protect the community from the farmer retaliation. I love this film. Wes Anderson has proved himself to have outstanding talent in mixing writing and visual presentation together in such a charming way. Being one of my favourite directors, I've watched a lot of his films. He has a very symmetrical way of staging his films, and being his debut stop motion animation film, he absolutely knocked it out of the park with the visuals yet again. You can pause this movie at any point and notice a little detail that didn't need to be there, but adds so much to the film in great ways. The soundtrack as well is amazing. I really recommend giving it a listen on YouTube because there were some really amazing tracks in there. The sound mixing and design was really well done as well. And it's amazing how well the score and the mixing go together in many scenes. This film stars George Clooney who gives probably one of his best performances ever and Meryl Streep who is a great actress as always. I've said before that when George Clooney does voice acting work it's much more compelling than his live action work because you're able to take away the face and just hear the performance which is super beneficial for this movie. If you haven't seen this film then seriously go do that. It is a classic. I give this movie a 9 out of 10. Look at all this apple juice. Apple juice? Apple juice? We didn't come here for apple juice. This is some of the strongest, finest alcoholic cider money can buy. Or they could even be stolen. It burns in your throat, boils in your stomach, tastes almost exactly like pure melted gold. Y'all are trespassing now. Illegally. Around these parts, we don't take kindly to cider poachers. You've aged badly, rat. You're getting a little long in the tooth yourself, partner. Bean security? What, why are you wearing that badge? What is it? It's my job. Hear you over this fucking amazing soundtrack. That was fun. Scott Pilgrim vs. the World is just pure fun. That's literally all I can say. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Jokes. But seriously, this film is one of those movies that would just have you laughing and smiling all the way through. For anyone who is familiar with the director Edgar Wright's style, you'll know that the film has some amazing comedy. If you like video games slash movies in general, then you'll love this. I seriously do not want to say anymore because it's so much more fun to go in blind. It is such a good movie. 9 out of 10. So when do we get to meet her? Oh, please, let it be soon. That's for me. <laughs> Hi. You promise to be good? Of course I'll be good. Seriously, please be good. I am I normally not? Hey, Knives, this is Steven Stills. He's the talent. Hey. Is she gonna geek out on us? She'll just sit in the corner, man. I mean... I want her to geek out on us. She'll geek. She geeks. She has the capacity to geek. Okay. You're good. Wow. Hey, let me get your coat. Hi. Knives, that's Kim. Uh, sorry, what was your name? Kim. Can you play the drums? Yes. Yet another film from Wes Anderson, Grand Budapest Hotel is one of those movies that holds a special place in my heart. 
Starring Ralph Fiennes, F. Murray Abraham, and Toby Revolori. I watched this movie with my dad a few months back, and it changed the way I saw film. It showed me that there was an art to filmmaking, and introduced me to auteur work. Being one of the films that sparked my love for movies, it's deserving to be on this list. Like all his films, Grand Budapest has some of the best visuals in terms of cinematography and colour. The camera work as well is so well done. The way that the characters move in relation to the camera is utilised in so many comedic ways. There are so many small things to appreciate everywhere. Small things like the aspect ratio changing within each of the stories it tells helps just bring the film to another level of creativity. This film is presented like a story within a story within a story, and the stories it does tell are so compelling and extremely well written. Yet again, the dialogue was witty and flows so well. But it's really up to the actors to pull it off, and they all do a spectacular job. Ralph Fiennes especially gives an Oscar-worthy performance that is just so immersive. The score by Alexander Desplat is so moving, and yet again I urge you to go listen to it. This film is pure joy, and you can really see the amount of care and love that was poured into it. It's a 9 out of 10 for me. Who are you? I'm Zero, sir. The new lobby boy. Zero, you say? Yes, sir. Well, I've never heard of you, never laid eyes on you. Who hired you? Mr. Mosher, sir. Mr. Mosher? Yes, Monsieur Gustav. Am I to understand you've surreptitiously hired this young man in the position of a lobby boy? He's been engaged for a trial period, pending your approval, of course. Uh, perhaps, yes. Thank you, Mr. Mosher. You're most welcome, Monsieur Gustav. You're now going to be officially interviewed. Uh, should I go and light the candle first, sir? What? The no. Candle. The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, directed by the Coen brothers, was by far my favourite film of 2018. It's an anthology movie comprised of six different stories from the Wild West. The Coens are known for creating really outstanding period pieces, and this is no exception. They really capture the style of the West, which was assisted in the clever writing that implements words and phrases from the time. If I had to order the segments from Best to Worst, Part 4 starring Tom Waits, Part 1 starring Tim Blake Nelson, Part 2 starring James Franco, Part 6 starring John O'Neill and Brendan Gleeson, Part 3 starring Liam Neeson, and Part 5 starring Zoe Kazan. The great thing about this film is that you don't have to watch it in order for all. The great thing about this film is that you don't have to watch it in order, or all, all at once. I would recommend watching the first three, then taking a break, then watching the next three maybe a day later. In terms of visual style, this film is outstanding. There are so many little details in the set design and staging that are really fun to notice. Each segment has really distinguishable visual style in terms of colour, lighting and camera work. I cannot recommend this film enough. I give it a 9 out of 10. I'd like me a splash of whiskey to wash the trail dust off in my gullet and keep my singing voice in pedal. Whiskey's illegal. This is a dry county. Well, what are they drinking? Whiskey. These outlaws. Oh, well, don't let my white duds and pleasant demeanor fool you. I, too, have been known to violate the statutes of man, and not a few of the laws of the Almighty. You ain't no outlaw, and we don't drink with tin horns. Sir, it seems that you are no better a judge of human beings than you are a specimen of one. I absolutely adore this film. The Lobster, directed by Yorgos Lanthimos, used to be my favourite film because this film is just spectacular. It stars Colin Farrell, Rachel Weisz, Leia Seydoux, and they all give such spectacular performances, especially from Colin Farrell, who has such an amazing range as an actor. I honestly don't want to say much about the plot because I went into this film blind and I absolutely loved it. In terms of presentation, this film is beautiful. The cinematography and the colour grading is so bleak and lifeless, but it really adds to the tone of the film. And it still has some really pretty cinematography. The song you hear playing in the background right now is from the film, and I really do recommend looking up the score. Yorgos Lanthimos adds so much detail to his films that all help the tone. Go watch this film multiple times if you can. I love this movie, and it's just so amazing. 
It's a 9 out of 10. Is your room number 186? Yes, it is. I imagine you know that masturbation is not permitted in the rooms or any other area of the hotel. Yes. And yet it has been brought to my attention that you continue to do it. Were you looking at a photograph while you were masturbating? Yes. What did the photograph show? A naked woman on a horse in the country. If I were in your shoes, I would not be ogling the naked woman, but the horse. I'm sure that horse was once a weak and cowardly man, just like you. This is not necessary, please. It was an accident. I just got please. carried away. This is not necessary. Please, place your hand in this the This could be a warning. But I've been good otherwise. I... Birdman, or The Unexpected Virtue of Ignorance, was released in 2014 and directed by Alejandro G. Inarritu. If you haven't seen this movie, its main catch is that the film is presented in one continuous take. Now to pull off long takes like the ones in this movie, you have to have some serious talent and money behind it, and this film pulls them off so well. The movie has an all-star cast, Michael Keaton, Edward Norton, Emma Stone, Zach Galifianakis, all give such amazing performances. The movie follows Regan, a once great actor who played the superhero Birdman, who's now trying to break away from the role and move into stage acting. The casting of Michael Keaton is super purposeful in the way that he is basically the main character Regan. Keaton has stated that after playing Batman in Tim Burton's 1989's Batman, he tried to break away from the role. It took him years for people to not recognize him as just Batman, and Birdman reflects this so well. The writing overall is really good and funny. The music as well is great and super charming and really adds to the tone of the film. All around, it's just excellent. If you're interested in cinematography, you should look up the way that they pull off these amazing shots. I could not recommend this film enough. Be warned that this film has a runtime of 119 minutes, so watch it if you're willing to endure this all in one sitting. I give Birdman a solid 10 out of 10. Come on, give it to well, me. Thinking. Fuck me hard. Okay. Just, just yeah. Give it. Right. Come on, don't okay. talk about yeah. it. Just. Hey, I'm the wrong person to ask, right? I don't even know the guy. Okay, what's your point? What's my point? Yeah, what's your point? What are you saying? Spit it out. Oh. You're saying what? Oh. What are you saying? You're saying love is absolute. Yes. Yes. The kind of love that I'm talking about, it is absolute. The kind of love that I'm talking about, you don't. You don't try to kill people. I don't know, what do you think, boss? Okay, you wanted to do this with me? What do you think? Everybody's back. Larry needs to see him for a fitting. I'll take that as a yes. So, who are you? That's Sam, my daughter. Oh, your daughter. Wow, that's amazing. You don't look anything like each other. What do you do? Well, She's my sister. Works for me. And does she talk? Uh, and speak. She does, mm. yeah. She can even sit or stay or roll over if you have any treats. Hey, welcome aboard, Mike. Thank you, Captain. Um, I'm Mike Shiner, by the way. Oh, I know who you are. I, uh, I saw you in Hot House at the Geffen. You were great. Oh, thank you. Your ass is great. Dude, seriously? <laughs> This is the film that made me lose all hope in the integrity of the Oscars. Good Time was released in 2017 and stars Robert Patterson, Ben Safdie and Jennifer Jason Lee. And this is the best film of 2017, hands down. Yet it did not get nominated for a single Oscar. I doubt anyone in the Academy even watched it because it's so underrated. One of the things that really makes this film great is the amazing performances, especially from Robert Patterson of all people. The man from Twilight stars in my second favourite film of all time. Jennifer Jason Lee as well, who I think is such an amazing actor, gives a really funny yet compelling performance. This film is also written so fucking well. Ronald Bronstein and John Safdie, the writers, are so good at writing realistic dialogue that all flows so well together, you will not be bored while watching this movie. But the real star of this film is Benny Safdie. Not only did he direct this with his brother, 
but he stars in it. His performance was so fucking amazing. He plays a deeply autistic character, and the first time I watched it, I couldn't tell that he wasn't because it was such a convincing performance. The reason why I haven't talked about the plot is because like a lot of the films in this list, I want you to go in without any knowledge of where it's going to go. Visually as well, Good Time is so beautiful and thrilling. The cinematography is so great. I feel like the DPs don't get enough credit. Great job to Sean Prince Williams. The music as well is so thrilling and energetic. The incorporation of techno is really great and adds a level of adrenaline to the film. The editing as well is so spectacular. If you're an editor, you need to watch this film because it is so amazing. I cannot recommend this movie enough. It's a 10 out of 10, hands down. Did you burn yourself when you threw the pan? Nick? Nick, it's good that we should talk about this. Uh, this is good stuff we're talking about. Excuse me. Are you Peter? Yes, I am. We're in the middle of something. Hello. Nick, what are you doing? We're in the middle of something here. We're in the middle of the exam. Hey, hey, Nick, Nick. The stuff and the, the pan and the wait, chicken. Wait, 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 please. Nick. How would you like it if I made you cry? How would you like that? No, I would not. But Come on, get up. They, they told me I had to do this stuff. Let's go. Let's go. No, but he wrote me. He has all my stuff. Nick, 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 shut up then. Nick, this is really my work. Here. This is my stuff, okay? Nick, oh, shame on you, kind brother. Shame on me? You're not helping Shame on you. Shame on you. I don't think a film has ever made me cry with both sadness, misery, and love all at the same time. Except for Anomalisa. Directed by my favourite writer and now my favourite director, Charlie Kaufman. Anomalisa is an absolute masterpiece of filmmaking. There is so much to appreciate in this movie and I cannot recommend it to enough people because not enough people have seen it. From the clips I'm showing on screen, you can probably tell that this is a stop motion animation. The movie has done so much for adult animation and for the median in general. The absolutely stunning animation is breathtaking and at moments so hyper realistic that I thought I was literally a live action. I've watched this film with friends before and I hadn't told them it was stop motion and it took them 10 minutes to figure out that it was. This film is so marvelously written and is one of the most real films I've ever seen. The film connects with me and others on so many levels. Every line of dialogue from the leads has so much emotion in it. The passionate performances from David Thewlis, the passionate performances from David Thewlis and Jennifer Jason Lee make this such a personal and emotional movie. Out of all the films on this list, this is the one that you must go in blind. There is so much passion and love behind this movie, and I honestly cannot recommend it enough. I'm thinking of doing an analysis video one day because there is so much to break down. Somehow Anomalisa is such a simple, sweet movie, while also being a complex art film at the same time, and I commend Charlie Kaufman for making this spectacle of film. It's so deserving of the 10 out of 10 rating, and I love this film so much, and I always will. <laughs> well, I go this way, so I'll say goodnight. Oh, poo. Yeah, poo on you. Poo, poo, poo. Say good night, Lisa. Good night, Michael. Poo. Good night. Lisa? Yes? I was wondering if maybe you'd want to come to my room for a little nightcap. You sure you don't mean Emily? Everyone always likes Emily better. Uh, I'm going to the room, Lisa. I'll see you later, maybe. Have fun. Um, I came here with you. I'm not gonna just abandon you. Oh, don't be an idiot, Lisa. He's gorgeous. Have fun. Night. So, I'm over this way. Have fun. Good night. Oh, Jesus. Uh, uh, oh, oh. Are, you, are, you, are you okay? I'm okay, I'm okay. It happens all the time. Anyway, those are my favorite films of all time. Obviously, this list is always changing, so maybe I might do a revisited list one day. If you want to check out my extended list, the link to my IMDb is down below, along with all the tracks I used in this video. 
Thank you to all those people who helped me with the video, uh, Emily for being in it, Caitlin for helping me with the ideas and writing. Uh, leave a comment down below if you want more videos like this. Uh, anyway, I've been Mr. Krebs, and thank you so much for watching.